part of the impetus behind making our worship in chapel more multicultural was, first of all, we think that that pleases God, that it's more representative of, of God's kingdom uh, to worship in, in a way that uh, respects and, and draws on the experience of more than just the people uh, who might be planning it or who might be worshiping that particular day. And, and also, um, we found that when we did worship more multiculturally, that we were getting better student participation too, that the, the students did feel more engaged in the worship when we made that part of our worship habit. Our grant project was to invite leaders from different backgrounds, different Christian backgrounds, different contexts, you might say, and they came to our school and led a chapel and then a day-long workshop, and we had four guests throughout the year. Uh, the backgrounds of our guests were, uh, one was an African-American who came from a really interesting background, a good mix of uh, working in Reformed churches but growing up in a black Pentecostal church. Uh, we had another guest who came as an expert in specifically multicultural worship or international songs, global songs. We had another leader come who was an expert in anti-racism training, in biblical anti-racism training. And we had uh, a fourth guest, who well, now I've got to rack my brain a little bit here. <laughs> um, uh, and the fourth guest was from uh, a modern church setting where the, the mix-up of his congregation is, is fairly diverse, but primarily Caucasian. Uh, C.J. Greer taught us a prayer form called, and I, and I always get the, the words mixed up, but I think it's you to do who prayers, where you give a name of God that's offered in scripture, um, Elohim, for example, and then you also give God a characteristic um, so an example of that might be uh, that for, for that, those first two sections might be Almighty God. You've given God an adjective and you've given him a name, God. Uh, and then the next part is you name something that he's done. So Almighty God who parted the Red Sea. And then the last part, after you've given a name to God, given him an adjective and named something that he's done, uh, you ask him for something. So Almighty God who parted the Red Sea, we ask for your presence in a special way here in this chapel today. And so they're shorter prayers than other prayer forms, but we also found those to be really, really meaningful and engaging with, with scripture and with God's work in our personal lives in, in a new way, in a deeper way.